Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. What we're going to do in this exercise, we're going to do more practice with an if statement, with conditioning using Python. Now, we're going to create a program a little bit, uh, just it's, it's, uh, we're trying to help Nokia here. So we're going to create a program that calculates a total of an order and calculate the discount if there's any discount. Now, we came up, we wrote this on the board. The program works like this. So you will enter some, enter the model name and the quantity. And based on the model name and the quantity, you set the price. And then you calculate the total and you print out the total. All right? So we're going to create a new one. And then after that, I'll show you how to do the discount. I'm going to create a new one. And then we're going to do it with turtle. OK, here it is. All right, I'm going to change it to say, uh, again, conditions. I'm, I'm going to call this conditions and functions. Before we've done the quiz, but this one we're doing conditioning based on text. We're comparing text, okay? All right, so the first thing we need to do is that we'll ask the user to enter the model number. Okay, so we'll say, again, we start with this. We say input values, okay? All right, and the first thing we say, we're gonna have model. That is the model number that they will enter. And we will say enter input. I'm going quickly with this because we've talked about this before, right? Enter model uh, name or number, doesn't matter, okay? And after that, the model is a text. Okay, typically what we've done before, we've actually did what? We converted the input to a, a number, float or integer. That is not always necessary. It depends on what you're entering. So if you're entering text, you don't need to convert it into a, a number, okay? So since the model number or model name is text, I don't need to convert it. Then I can say, for example, quantity equal Q equal what? Equal input. Enter quantity. All right. Now that is different than the last one. Why? The quantity is a number and it will be used in my calculation. So what do I do? I will start with this. I say I need to convert it to an integer. Why integer? Because you can't have a half a phone. You can always, the phone is always, uh, the quantity is always a whole number. So you will say input. Sorry, you will say int q. That way, it's converted to a number. Now, do I have more inputs? The program asks to enter the model name and the quantity. There are no more inputs. I don't need to do anything else. All right? Now, the next step is that you do some processing. Now, how do we do the process? I've given you is that there are three models, Nokia 8X, Nokia 9X, and Nokia 10X. I don't know, we're just making up these numbers, right? These, uh, uh, these uh, model numbers. And based on what they enter, for example, if it's Nokia 8X, the price is 1,000, we're talking about dirhams, and then the, if it is 9X, it's 1,200, and the last one is 1,600. Now, how do we do that? Whenever you face choices in programming, you have to use conditions, if conditions. Now, based on my observation last time, there are things that you need to pay attention to. First, what do we compare? We compare the model. That's what I'm comparing. So I say, if model equal to what? Here's what we do equal. What are my options? For example, Nokia 8X like that all right now when i do this what does that mean 
That means the user will have to enter this value exactly. All right, we'll come back and modify this. Remind me to do that, okay? So if they enter this value, what is the price? The price, we're gonna define a variable called price, and I'm gonna set it at the beginning equal to zero. So price equal to zero, like that. So this price will contain, will be changed based on what the user entered. So if the user enter uh, this value, this model name, so the price, let's say, I think it was 1,100 there, okay? To make it float, you can put zeros if you want. That zero, that will make it float, or just leave it like that, okay? Now we've learned how to do else if. Else if means that if this condition is not true, check the other condition, all right? How do we do else if? You say E-L-I-F like this. What do you put? The other condition. Here's how you put the other condition. I'm gonna do control, copy this and paste it in here. Now what that happens here, it says, if you enter this model, the price will be this. Else, if the model is equal 9x, then we get a different price. So the price is equal to what? 1,300, all right? Else if is what? The last thing we have, else if, you say command copy, command V, else if what? Else if the model is 10X, what do you enter? 10X, then the price is equal 1,600. These are again dummy models. So that is how you do else if. If this condition is true, the price is this and don't check everything else, we'll stop. Now if this condition is not true, what happens? It goes to the next one and check the next one. If this condition is true, then the price is 300 and I stop. Else it continues and check the other condition. So that's what else if does. This condition, if true, do it, else check the other one, else check the other one. At the end, if none of these is true, if none of these condition is true, where do you go? We go, we usually do it like this. We put at the end, else. All right, what do you do if the, if the, if, uh, if this is not, if none of this is true, we usually put else statement. It means what? This condition is not true, this condition is not true, and this, not, this condition is true, we go to the end. What do we do in here? Means that the user entered something that is not valid. None of these options are available. So what do we say? We say what? We say, uh, maybe you can say print invalid, invalid model, all right? Now, what is the price? If none of this is true, what is the price? The price is still zero, you get it? But this will be printed out to the user saying that you got an invalid model entered, you entered an invalid model, okay? Now, let me pause for a minute and make sure that you guys are okay with this. All right, so now the next step to do is that after we determine the price, we need to do the calculation. How much is the total? How do we do the total? We go in here and simply say total equal to what? Equal the quantity Q times what? Times the price. Now, if they enter any of these, then we will have a price. If they didn't enter any of these, the price will be zero, all right? So now what do we say? We say we print total, print total price, total uh, bill is how much? Equal to what? Equal the variable that we did here, which we defined here, which is what? Total, like that. Okay, 
Now let's test it and run it and see what happens. If I do this, I enter the name. What are my options here? Nokia 8X. Okay, so for example, Nokia 8 space 8X, and I hit enter. What is the quantity? The quantity, let's say two. What would be the price? The price is two times 1,100, and you get the answer, okay? If you run it again, if we run it again, Nokia 9X, and I enter three, the answer is 3,900. This is not a very useful uh, user-friendly program because I don't know what to type. And the next step, I'll show you how to make it a little bit more tolerant. You could enter different ways of these values and then you get, still get the answer. All right? Let me just pause for a minute. All right. Now, some of you already figure out the difficulty with this program. The difficulty with this program is that the user has to enter exactly what's in this quotation. That is not easy to do because the user, if they haven't used this program before, it's difficult. So how do we make it a little bit more flexible? We tell the users that you have different options to enter. There is in conditions, remember when we talked about conditions? There is and and or. So if we wanted to give the user chances, options, to give, uh, to give him more options, what do we put? Or. So you have a way, you can enter the value this way, or this way, or the model this way, this way, or this way. So how do we do that? We can type in or model equal, for example, just 8x, like that. All right? Instead of entering Nokia 8X, they can just enter 8X. Or if you want to give them more options, you can say or model equal to what? We need two equals, right? Equals like this. You can say model equal to equal. For example, um, not, uh, 8 capital X. So even e either I enter 8X, uh, or Nokia 8 with space X or just 8X or capital 8X. So now the program becomes easier to use. And I can repeat the same thing for what? The others. So I can copy this, control copy, and then do the same thing here, command V. Now instead of not 8 here, what do we put? 9. And instead of here, what do we put? Also, nine. Same thing at the last, in the last one. So we'll make it 10 or what? 10 capital X. Okay, let's test it and see if it works. Now, if I run it, what happens? We say that we will enter, for example, we just want to test. I want to enter just 9x like that to see if it works. And now I enter the quantity 3, and I got the answer. Even I just enter what? 9x. If I run it again, if I enter 10 capital X, and then still enter the quantity 3, I still got my answer. Is this better for the user? Yeah, because they give him different ways to enter the values. Yeah. I'll show you the last part in this. When we run it, if I enter something else, DDD, is this a valid model number? No. What do we get? If I enter the quantity, what do I get? Invalid model. That's why, because it's not this, it's not this, it's not this, and then it goes to the else. Let me give you a chance to understand. Okay, so we're done with this part. What we're gonna do in the next video, I'll show you how we use functions to calculate the discount, and also have conditions in the functions 
and give me value back. All right. So we'll start with we'll start with this one and we'll start one in a minute. Okay.